so today I'm going to be talking about the Meteor Missile, but I'm going to have to be a little bit more harsh because there is somebody sleeping in the house. Anyway, uh, Meteor Missile is manufactured by MBDA, no surprise there. It is known as the BVRAAM, the Beyond Visual Range Air-to-Air -Air Missile, uh, and by God it's, it's potent. It's operated by the UK, Italy, France, Germany, Spain and Sweden, and again it's one of these MBDA European collaborations. Uh, it's to be used by all of these countries, and the munition, because it can be used by all of these countries, has to be fit for uh, the Typhoon, the Gripen, uh, the Rafale, and soon enough the F-35 for the British Navy, or the Royal Navy. So first off, it's a pretty heavy-duty missile. People have this conception of air-to-air -air missiles, that they're light, that they uh, that they're really easily maneuverable. It's not true. Uh, to have the fuel to travel a long way, the electronics and the sensors to maneuver, and the warhead to, you know, pack a large punch, they often have to be reasonably chunky. Meteor is exceptionally chunky. It weighs 190 kilograms uh, because it has to travel so far, with a length of 3.7 meters and a diameter of 17.8 centimeters. It utilizes uh, an RF seeker, which uh, is sort of similar to the one being used for the Asta missile, and this uh, RF, which is radio frequency seeker, is manufactured in Italy. Basically what it does is it uses radio frequency waves to home in uh, on a target in the terminal phase, and it's entirely automated. It has both impact and proximity uh, fuses, which are, and the proximity fuses measured by radio frequency, uh, it's for PFS antenna, detonation mechanisms, and the Meteor utilizes for its actual warhead blast fragmentation, so no real surprise there. Something else that it also utilizes beyond its warhead for damage is just sheer kinetic might. Uh, so this thing travels fast. It has three to six times the normal kinetic energy of modern, uh, or normal, modern air-to-air -air missiles. Anything that's a good hit uh, is a final hit, rendering any aircraft it does hit a warped mess of metal. You know, composite materials and glass shattered, and rendering any bird that it hits cooked. Uh, but probably not edible because of the embedded fragments and the fact it would have disintegrated into literally a million pieces. Uh, probably not great for roast dinner. So, again, if seagulls are stealing your chips at the beach or, and you're out of shells uh, on a hunt, perhaps the answer is to call an air support with the BVRAAM. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. The reason this missile has such kinetic power, three to six times more than normal modern missiles, is because of its speed. It has huge speed. Uh, it uses a ramjet motor, which I've done a video on this, but basically as you move along the curve of propulsion performance uh, at supersonic speeds, it forms shockwaves. You can provide impulse. Uh, and again, I did a video on this explaining it a lot better for Brahmos, uh, Brahmos and ramjets. It creates pressure dif differentials that force air through loads of heat because of this pressure, and it you know, combusts the fuel needed. Speaking of fuel, it uses solid fuel with basically a variable, variable flow ducted rocket which propels it super fast. Uh, Meteor can travel, I think, over Mark IV, which is ridiculously fast. So, uh, we're seeing that in regard to air to air, uh, in regard to air to air missiles. And, you know, soon enough they are going to have to take technological capability to make it even faster to the point that physically uh, aeroplanes cannot maneuver their way around it. Uh, they're getting even faster than Crawford now at this point, which is shocking. Uh, and what this does mean is that targets can be eliminated at a distance at which they can't engage because you have this sheer speed. You can launch beyond visual range. You have incredible sensor and missile plane communication technologies which facilitate this beyond visual range strike. Uh, and this means that the plane that's coming towards you can't actually hit you before the munition hits it. So 
they don't even get a chance to get a shot on your aircraft uh, after the missile is fired. They're done for. So beyond its actual power, uh, the thing that really makes it potent uh, beyond the physical power is the brilliant data link system it has. It's got third-party network, uh, makes it supremely accurate, well-connected. You have total information flow between the missile, between the, I guess, air platform, whether that be Typhoon, whether that be Gripen, whether it be Rafale, whether it be soon the F-35. And this continues even at the long range it operates at. And speaking of this long range, after, you know, all it is a long range missile, it's a beyond visual range missile. It's a lot beyond visual range. The missile can travel 200 kilometers with an no escape zone of, and this is pretty amazing, I think, 60 kilometers. And that gives it the world's largest no escape zone on the planet. And I mean, technically, I think that does make it standoff, doesn't it? Uh, all of this capability, all of this brilliant capability, but they do sting a little to buy. They cost 1.75 million pounds per unit as of, I think, 2021. But nonetheless, they are incredibly potent and they're a brilliant uh, addition to Rafale, the, soon to be the F-35, the Gripen and the Typhoon's arsenal of weapons, making them ever more versatile and making them ever more deadly and lethal at longer ranges, which, again, that combats a lot of the stealth factor of the fifth generation uh, aeroplanes of the fifth generation fighters, and that's going to make the, uh, the F-35, when the UK gets it and fully equips it, <clears throat> it's going to make it ever more potent, because you have both stealth and standoff ability. So, I think it'll be interesting. That's it for Meteor.